Okay, so we are um, studying something new today. So um, if you look at the board, uh, it might not look like we have a lot there. It's because I want to spend enough time introducing the new topic. Um, uh, sometimes I spend too much time doing that, but I do want to spend enough time. So, um, in some sense, it's not completely new. It's uh, dealing with a situation that you have seen before. Uh, oh, here's my roller. So, um, for example, oh, actually, let me bring this up. This is a jack that I can use to elevate stuff. Um, so if I have an object sitting here, um, this is what we call equilibrium or even static equilibrium. So the idea of equilibrium is simple. I think I might have used that word a few times, but I probably didn't properly define it. Have I defined the, the word equilibrium? Have you here heard the people here have heard the word equilibrium? What do you think equilibrium means? If you just heard it, just out of blue, somebody talk, talks about equilibrium. Right. Still? So like, if you don't do anything to like the system, it'll just stay that way? Yeah. But if you do something, it'll... Yeah, it'll maybe move away from that. But the idea of equilibrium is that it's the situation where things are somehow equal. It's uh, sort of gonna remain that way. So let me define equilibrium using the mechanical concepts that you know, we've introduced. So when we talk about equilibrium, um, this is how we would have defined it. Uh, if I talked about this when we did forces in chapter four, four and five, um, your textbook, I'm pretty sure, actually does this in chapters four and five. So we would define equilibrium as saying, all right, net force is equal to zero. Is it? Um, I don't know, clear why we would define equilibrium this way? Um, I guess starting from why we would use even force to define equilibrium. Like what's special about net force being equal to zero? Zero acceleration. Zero acceleration, that's what everyone's thinking, right? <laughs> yeah, so net, when net force is equal to zero, that means your acceleration is equal to zero. And so that's, uh, um, that's what we are talking about when we say equilibrium in physics. Um, one thing that's curiously missing here is uh, we don't talk about velocity, even though your intuition says that equilibrium, things are not moving, but we don't define equilibrium that way. It's because, you know, velocities are kind, we didn't spend a lot of time in this, on this, in this class, but it, velocity is relative. So if something is moving at constant velocity versus it being completely at rest, in terms of physics, there's not that much difference between those two. So as in, you know, it, this is a bit more abstract, so I'll just uh, leave it with this example. If you have these two cards, and you are an observer sitting on this card, and there's another observer sitting on this card, right now they are at rest relative to each other, right? But if one of the cards is moving, it's, uh, um, so while this card is moving, you could uh, describe the situation from observer B, saying that A is the one moving, or you could describe the situation from observer A, saying that B is moving. So whatever the velocity is, that has no uh, real um, velocity is relative. Um, if you ever take physics 4C, you will see a lot more of this, so I'll leave that there. So velocity is relative. So the idea that's uh, useful for defining equilibrium is acceleration, not velocity. Equilibrium is a position where acceleration is zero. One last example of equilibrium that you have actually seen. Uh, I might even have said the word equilibrium, but didn't speak, um, you know, didn't go into too much detail, is the equilibrium with respect to um, the mass and the spring system. So I think you might, I think, I'm pretty sure I've did, done this at least once. You know, label this position, call this X equilibrium. Like this is the equilibrium position. And when we say that, now the way I can describe that now is that, well, that's the position where net force is zero, so the acceleration is zero. Now, if I pull this down, I don't call this equilibrium, because right now the net force is zero, because I'm holding on to it. 
But when I imagine me not holding on to it anymore, acceleration won't be zero. So, um, so even though it said, I guess this is the clearest example where velocity equal to zero doesn't mean equilibrium. At the very top and bottom, its uh, velocity is zero, but uh, that's not an equilibrium because this is how we define it. Yeah. So with the equilibrium, um, um, because this is how we define it, uh, sometimes people can talk about um, what, we, what they call dynamic equilibrium. and static equilibrium. So this is a system exhibiting dynamic equilibrium. Every time this mass passes through this point, it's a dynamic equilibrium. Meaning, um, I'm pretty sure that is still what it means. You know, acceleration is still zero, but it's moving at that point, so, um, so but we are not going to deal with all that many dynamic equilibrium because it's a sort of, I feel like um, many of the interesting things you can talk about with equilibrium, you can't really do that with the dynamic equilibrium. So let me just deal with the static equilibrium. So static equilibrium is where in addition to the definition of equilibrium, you also have velocity equal to zero in whatever reference frame you are measuring velocity. So this, for example, is in static equilibrium. Good? Yes? Now, it's clear that this acceleration of this block is zero, right? OK, so that's a static equilibrium. Um, now, when you start looking at more situations that involve Static equilibrium, as in things are, so with the static equilibrium, because your velocity is zero and acceleration is zero, um, things are at rest, velocity equal to zero, and they will stay at rest, acceleration, because velocity, that zero velocity won't change. So as you look at more situations that involve um, static equilibrium, you will soon realize that this condition here is um, it's insufficient. Let me give you an example where you can see that uh, something that's at rest, even though the net force on it might be zero, it's not staying at rest. So I have a ruler. Let me put this here. Uh, let me put this here. All right, it's at rest. It's staying at rest, right? Okay. Let me push it over a little bit. Actually, let me push it over this way. Hmm. All right, uh, OK, OK, OK. So somewhere around here. So when this ruler is positioned like this, and when I let go of my hand, do you believe that the net force on this ruler is still zero? Close to zero, right? And you know, if uh, you want to make you absolutely sure it's zero, I can even you know, put it on my hand and make sure I push it up with enough you know, force that net force is either zero or upward. But what else do you see going on with this ruler? It's uh, rotating, right? That's what you are seeing here. So up until around this point or so, the net force on the ruler was zero. And there was uh, something else pertaining to the ruler that was zero. We just weren't recognizing it because up until this point, we haven't dealt with the rotation. We only dealt with we only dealt with the linear motion. We only dealt with the things like acceleration and you know, combined with the position and velocity. And these things are the things that describe translational motion or linear motion. What we mean by translational or linear, it's clear, right? I don't have to go into explaining what those words mean. Yes? Yeah, things just moving in a line. Now, we have seen circular motion, where things are not moving in a straight line, but things are going in a circle. We have seen that. But even that, we kind of described it like a translational motion. Because we are talking about, all right, this mass here is moving with some speed in this direction. And because of acceleration, its direction is changing. And we are looking at it as a linear motion. 
we are not quite handling as a, what we are going to do now, rotation. So this is the first time I'm you know, pointing out that translation isn't the only motion you can have. You can also have rotation. Um, and that's what you're seeing here. As I push this over, even up to about this position here, um, net force is still very close to zero. And even here, net force is still very close to zero. But as you are beginning to see something happening to the ruler, something else is not quite zero anymore. Move it a little bit more. And even though net force is zero, as in you are not seeing this ruler dramatically accelerate downward, something else is not zero. I mean, center of mass is a position. Like, I wouldn't call that zero or non-zero. It's just a center of mass is just a, located at a particular point. But if you're looking at center of mass, yeah. When I push this over, center of mass used to be on this platform. Now, when it's no longer on that platform, then you are beginning to see that happen. We'll go over that today. But what I want to, want to bring your attention to for now is this second type of motion that we haven't been covering so far, but we are going to now. That there's a whole set of quantities that we are going to look at that will cause the second type of motion. 